I guess just as far as playing a pretty close series against Arkansas and, and winning the series finale and then getting the run rule win tonight, just momentum heading into this weekend. How much momentum do you kind of feel for this team? All we can get. Um, you're either trying to momentum, you're either trying to get it or keep it. And so I'll take it. And uh, and I just I, I think of it more as a coach that all I care about is them getting out there and competing every single day in an effort that's that we expect that we hold each other accountable to and that you know anybody could could figure out that they would that's what you're supposed to do um uh, I, I really believe in my heart I, I, arkansas has got a great club and till we you know till we beat them they've won 15 in a row and we had a team the first week that won 13 in a row and we're about to go to a place here this third weekend they think they're the best team in the country that's what you sign up for in the southeastern conference that's a message i'm trying to convey there's an absolutely stick to itiveness and the stay in the fight that absolutely is a successful roadmap in this league because it'll do this to you. Uh, you know, I thought with uh, with not moving mountains, we should have won a series or swept in Arkansas. And I'm trying to I'm trying to get a team to understand it won't be any different this weekend. You know, let's go ahead and try to have a chance. But we've had two good weekends. We knew we advertised the schedule. You know, basically you feel like you're been playing like the best team in the country and I, but I believe in our program a ton too and I want us to get our share and, and we need to and um, so and then we'll come back and play number four and unless they've moved up to to whatever the following week that's what we sign up for but our act should be getting sharper now and you're not allowed to be sad till the season's over so we should be learning something and growing from every one of these experiences and uh, you know you can't play that game. Well, we could have won a game or two, and, and things would be different. It wouldn't matter if we were if we were five and one right now. We would have the same challenge that's about to happen. So, I told them to freshen up and, and take all the rocks out of their backpack before tonight's game and leave them down here with our prayer and our meeting in left field and, and go play baseball free and spirited. We'll look up way down the road and see where we're at. And then you know what? Once you get past a couple more weekends. It'll be the same for the next, the second half. Every team in our league is committed, built strong, recruiting great, in in the middle of it. And you know, it's things supposed to even out. We're supposed to get our share. So the only thing I'm disappointed is for everybody not realizing or us not playing to our capabilities to show everybody. I, I thought after the Thursday one to nothing loss to Arkansas, I think what I. My quote was, I think we can play with anybody in the country, and I want this team to keep at least feeling that way. That's the effort and, and the belief that they absolutely can hook it up with anybody, and that's what this league's supposed to do. It's supposed to draw it out of you and, and make you better and better and better. It's sport and baseball from walking into this for year 23. I, I, 23 years ago, I'm like, can it? man, this is awesome. Can it get any better? And it, all it has done is has. It has continued to get better and better and better because I don't know six or seven of these six or seven of our ten weekends here teams are going to be in the top 25 um, that we're going to play so we, we got to quit playing that game and go play some baseball yeah I wanted to, I guess you kind of mentioned just when you started your your uh, baseball career I wanted to ask you kind of about um, about a Birmingham Southern I'm sure you probably saw you probably saw it as a shutting down as obviously you went there coach there I guess I want to ask if you had any thoughts on on that on it shutting down and maybe what that place meant to you over the years. Yeah, thanks for asking the question. Uh, one, I'm not political. Uh, two, I care deeply about the place. Uh, I found my I had an amazing coach there, and that made me want to coach even more. So I found my faith there. Uh, Robin, my amazing wife, there in college, uh, they invested in me. It made me want to coach there I got a degree from there uh, I, I mean there's a whole list if I want to play selfish here for a second say what that place meant to me uh, I, I don't know all the details I knew it was an uphill battle once the college got to a certain place talked to Jan Weisberg their baseball coach today and reached out to him and uh, the school I've been trying to you know we have a, a local politician and trying to size votes and you know, making a call or two and just telling people that I love that school, it made a huge difference for me. But um, I, 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 I can't move a mountain and that didn't have any impact. And uh, But I don't know all the specifics. I just think it's a sad day. I, I think Birmingham Southern opened in 1856. I think that's the same year as Auburn University. So 
that's how long that that school had had been there and served that little area on the hilltop there in, in Birmingham. So uh, kind of stunned all day, although it's like somebody passing and you know they're probably going to pass but until it happens, you know. Um, so I was, I was sad about that to, today. I hadn't talked to Robin yet, but I'll visit with her. But I, I appreciate you asking. And, you know, there, there's a baseball team up there and there's student athletes up there and there's people that are giving a lot to that that won't exist and, and where are they going to go? Where are they going to transfer? What are they going to do? How are these kids going to get their degrees? So hopefully all the adults in the room, if this if this gavel has landed to, to end that, that school, which is, hadn't hit me yet, um, uh, the proper response is to go take care of one of those kids that, that are there now and and what's right. But it's it's pretty unbelievable. And thank you for asking the question. Which um, A&M, Kind of know what you get going there, right? Talented arms, some power bats. This is what, what have you seen from them? Yeah, I think we're going to see a couple lefty starters again. I feel like we've seen that the last couple of weeks. Uh, uh, but you know, I hope they're not better than Hagen Smith, um, but we've gotten some good, good traction. And you know, Vandy's Friday night lefty was really good. Those first two first games were, were, were challenging, so. Hopefully we can continue to try to figure out strategies. We've got to start shortening starters and get to a pin. Uh, even losing game two, I thought it helped us in game three to chew through bullpen a little bit and, and, and create that big inning that we we talked about there in game three versus Arkansas. Um, they got a middle of the lineup that you absolutely we're going to have to go through them. Um, we're going to have to absolutely get ahead and, and – uh, in the counts to be able to make pitches at the throat or at the floor uh, as opposed to getting behind in counts and because those guys have absolutely performed um, Lavalette, Montgomery, um, that top half, that top four, that lineup is really good. We've spent a ton of ton of time on these these guys already. So um, athletic, um, we'll, we'll see what the, the weather and the setup is and get a chance to practice there tomorrow. But I, I just don't think it's anything we we haven't seen. And uh, I think it's one of the nicest venues to go compete in. So um, I think it's going to be loud. And I, I think this is going to feel like, you know, this will be one of our most challenging settings to go into, um, going to uh, Texas A&M. So um, I'm looking forward to it. Like I said, I just think it's head down and absolutely be fresh and fight. And, and we've got to do some little things. Because um, I think that's how you create the big things, as opposed to, you know, our pitchers got to put the head in the mitt, and we got to get ahead of them. I think that's one of the strategies without going in depth. And I think when we have runners in scoring position, I think we could have done a better job the last two weeks. And as opposed to somebody trying to be a hero there and their barrel separate from their shoulder and their head, I, I really would like to see a connection of what you practice and train on every day really show up in the ball game. So I, I don't need heroes. I need connection. And to be able to do something as small as trusting your training and keeping a head and barrel connected with runners in scoring position, doing something small, allowing something big to show up. An example for me tonight was Ike Irish's base hit. He'd hit a home run. His first at bat, we got a runner in scoring position. He gets to two strikes. They brought in a lefty to face him, I think. Ike was, they just brought him in. He was seeing it, but it wasn't one of those where you felt like he was going to twirl on it. And he just absolutely, with two strikes, dribbled a ground ball through the six hole. We need more of that when it matters and when the table's set. And we need pitchers to absolutely realize, you know, when you have to give in and put a ball in the strike zone, it's not the way to handle somebody as offensive as Texas A&M or really anybody in our league. They're going to have to understand that this is about getting ahead and the count's in your favor there. And the more command you can show early, the more you can get somebody to swing it or have to deal with your pitch. And I think it'll open it up a little bit more. But I think we've taken steps from the first SEC weekend. And can we continue that? But that's kind of the messaging to the, to the ball club.